Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. Without evildoers, there would have been no archipelago. In 1973, on this day, Alexander Solzhenitsyn published his book, The Gulag Archipelago. Incredibly important work. Incredibly important work. Now, if you don't know anything about it, Gulag is an acronym means like main camp directorate or something along those lines. It uh, was the Soviet prison system. And it was pretty brutal. It was pretty brutal. This book detailed it in, in just striking, striking vividness. Uh, interesting thing about the book is that it was written in sections. And when I say that, I don't mean... I don't mean volumes, although it was. If you actually read it, it's like you're reading three books in one. He wrote it in sections and never kept all of the book on him at, at any given time because he was worried about security services catching him. So he wrote it in little pieces and then kind of pieced it together, had it stashed. It's cool stuff. The author spent ten years in a Soviet prison because he basically wrote some nasty letters about Stalin during World War II. When people talk about this book today, and this is the reason I think it's important, when they talk about it, it is presented as a critique of state communism under the Soviet Union, specifically under Stalin. And it is. No doubt. It is that. But I think it's more than that. I think it's more than that. I'm not even sure that he meant it to be more than that. But what he wrote was so universal. The critiques and the condemnations, they apply to anything. That line, without evildoers, there would, need, there would be no archipelago. Here's the thing. Now that you know what it is, you think you're talking about the prisoners, but you're not. It's not what he's saying. He says, ideology, that is what gives evildoing its long-sought justification and gives the evildoer the necessary steadfastness and determination. That is the social theory which helps to make his acts seem good instead of bad in his own and others' eyes so that he won't hear reproaches and curses but will receive praise and honors. ideology. He's talking about propaganda. He's talking about confusing legality and morality. And this is something that happens in every state. Every government. This happens. This occurs in every ideology. Almost every ideology. There is a collective will to do things that you would never do on your own. You can justify actions that you would never justify as an individual. Oh, but in pursuit of the cause, you can do it. This work, like, I don't, I don't like calling it a book. <laughs> this work is, uh, it examines that. It uses the Soviet Union as the example. But this is true everywhere. And he points it out in a couple of places. So there's a part of me that believes that he meant his work to be universal, but wasn't sure it would be accepted that way, so he didn't really, you know, bank too hard on it. But there are lines in it. Immediately following that section I read, he goes on to talk about how this is how the Spanish Inquisition was conducted. This is how colonization was conducted. He understood that these themes existed in all governments. He talked about how it was unwise, to say the least, <laughs> to entrust the few with absolute power over the many. He knew that unjust and unnecessary hierarchies were bad. He knew it in his heart when he was writing. I don't know that he ever came to the logical conclusion that that takes you to. Um, because I because I enjoy it so much, I haven't actually read too much about 
about it. I haven't dug into it because I have found that that ruins <laughs> books that I enjoy. <laughs> um, but that's what I see when I read it. I see somebody who understood that no government is best. No ideology is best. That they can all be corrupted. And that they can all create evildoers who believe they are doing good. I think uh, it's worth reading. I don't do book recommendations often, but if you've got some time to kill and understand, it's a Russian book, so, you know, be ready. Um, it's worth your time. It's worth your effort. Because there's a lot in it that you'll have to research the history of along the way. But it's worth it. And even if you don't go too deep into the history and you just focus on his main themes, you'll walk away with a pretty good understanding of not just how the Soviet Union worked in, in its worst possible light, but how all governments work in their best possible light. We like to pretend they're different. Should be noted that this year we've fallen below, but the number of people incarcerated today in the United States is about the same as we're in the gulags. Now, some of the people in the gulags, they were criminals. They deserved to be there. Most weren't. Most weren't. Most were political prisoners of some kind. Um, a lot were nonviolent, but his work is one of the few, one of the few works that if I, you know, if there's an asteroid headed towards the planet, and somebody's like, hey, <laughs> you need to give me a list of books to save, this would be on it. And it's not really because of the historical context in which it was written because of the message that's there if you read the subtext. If you watch this channel, you probably enjoy subtext because there's a lot of it in here. And if you, if you didn't get the subtext of it, you probably wouldn't like the channel, to be honest. So it's probably something that most of you would truly enjoy, and I highly recommend it. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good night.